Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Genesis chapter 7 verse 10, Romans chapter 4 verse 3, and Hebrews chapter 13 verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for all you've done, Lord. Thank you for her warnings. Thank you for heeding our God, but we most of all thank you for this grace that you've given us in your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Genesis chapter 7, verse 10. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. All right, and so we know that this is um, the time period in which um, Moses and his family and all of the animals that were in the ark were in the ark um, before um, the actual rains came and the floods came, right? And so this was a period of seven days, seven days of waiting. And so um, the thing I felt like the Holy Spirit has spoken to us in that time frame is, you know, even though you are being obedient, even though you are heeding the instructions of the Lord, there still may be a waiting period, right? There still may be time um, of waiting until the beginning right, of, of the fruition of what you have believed for. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we're holding to faith even when we do not see the actual manifestation of the thing, right? And so we know that it is coming, we know that it is near. We know what he has spoken to us and we hold fast to that. Amen. All right. And so um, the second verse that the Lord gave me was Romans chapter four, verse three. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. All right. And so, um, as Abraham believed God, um, that there was a blessing involved in the believing or having faith, right? Having faith in something that you do not see. God counted to him righteousness um, as righteousness because um, the thing about righteousness, if you keep reading it further in Romans 4, it'll talk, it talks about um, the blessing of what that means, right? To be considered righteous. Um, the blessing is that your lawless deeds are forgiven and your sin is not counted against you. And that was something that was spoken by David. And so um, when you're righteous, when righteousness is counted, sin is not counted, right? And so that was um, what Abraham experienced and those who were his children, the children of faith, the children who believed God, it was not counted to them as righteous. It was counted to them as righteousness. And for us who have believed on Christ, the same thing, right? So um, for us who have believed, once we believe, we are counted as righteous. It is not through our deeds that we are righteous, because if it was based on our deeds or our works, then um, we would all fall short. And then people would be um, um feeling as if they deserve something that um, deserve eternal life when they they messed up or or they would uh, not deserve it based on the fact that they've only done one or two things or things like that no it's based on the righteousness of Christ Jesus himself and what he did and what he overcame when he died as a perfect offering um 
us living a sinless life. It caused us to have atonement um, through his blood. And that is what made us righteous. And that is what the free gift was. All right. And so all we have to do is believe that and receive it. And we are in this arc of safety right now, right? That is that is something that um it was told to us by the Lord, right? We are we are in a place of protection under the shadow of his wings. And um because of that, we're waiting for our redeemer. Right, we are waiting in a position of submission to faith. Right, even in the the ark where it may not be what you're used to. Um, remember, these were tent dwelling people, so to go inside of an ark and not come out for seven days, that was a big faith move. Right, and remember. Um, the Lord didn't tell them seven days, at least from what we, re- we read. Um, it just says, go into the ark. So for seven days, they had to continue to believe, even though, um, you know, they weren't hearing or seeing or feeling any effects of what the actual promise was to come, which was the rain. Right. And so, you know, imagine sitting there and maybe someone expresses some doubt and that's a seed. And then you're hearing all these animals and you have to clean up after all these animals and it's starting to stink. And you are realizing the reality of being in this park. Right. That's how our lives are. Um, we're living lifestyles that are in an arc. Right, a place of faith, a place where we're going to have to stand firm and believe and wait on the Lord, growing in our patience and our endurance and in our character. Amen. All right, you guys, the third scripture that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter 13, verse 10. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. So the Levitical priesthood were those who served the tent, right? And so they had the right um, to eat the showbread um, of the presence of God. And and they had the right to eat um, the offerings after they had been offered, right? Um, The certain parts, the meat. And so um, they had rights to those things and so um for us um we are believers in Christ right the veil has been rent so he is the ultimate high priest so we don't have a need for um that Levitical priesthood anymore that that way of being now we are the the priests right and so we are, is this is what the Bible says. And so we um, are able to eat of the altar of the cross, right? If you think of the cross and you think of it as being an altar on which the sacrifice of Christ Jesus was laid, um, we are able to eat of Christ. Remember, we want to eat of Christ. We want to eat his body. We want to eat his blood. It needs to um, be a part of our essence, our being, right? And so um, it it is the benefits that we receive from eating of this altar are just so many promises, so many benefits, and we can eat of it, right? But guess what? If you don't believe in it, if you don't believe in Christ Jesus' atonement for your sins, then you cannot eat of it, right? And so that's why it's saying we have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. We have a right to eat it because we have believed. We have a right to eat of the promises and we have a right to eat of the safety that it involves. We have a right to eat of the fact that our sins are not counted against us and that we are counted as righteous. So there are so many beautiful benefits and blessings 
to um, what it is that we have received and what it is that we get to eat of. Amen. So be grateful, right? As you wait, rejoice. As you wait for the coming of the Lord, continue to watch for him, um, continue to eat of him, continue to be blessed in the fact that you know, your sins are not counted against you and that, you know, you are counted as righteous because these are great benefits that everyone doesn't get to eat of. Only those who believe, those who have faith, right? And so we need to continue to stand firm in faith, even as we wait inside the ark. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that you are so near. Thank you for sending these verses again, especially this this ark verse, because I'm just so grateful for it. It lets us know that, you know, you are still soon to come, even if we have to wait a little while, Lord. We know what you have revealed to us, and we ask you to forgive us for our sins of not... um maybe being shaky at times and we ask you to forgive us for that and help us to stand firm lord when we begin to quiver or shake or express something that is not of you lord god help us to grab hold of your leg grab hold of your hand lord god and stay close to you and fill us back up with that faith and virtue and belief in knowing that you are who you said you were We love you. We give you all the glory and praise. And we ask you to forgive us for our sins, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take every thought that is not like you out of our head, Lord. And we give you permission to replace it with Holy Spirit-inspired thoughts, um, thoughts of faith, thoughts that cause our faith to grow. Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory. We know that you are soon to come and we can't wait to see your face. We're watching for you in the clouds, Lord Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you would like to rededicate your heart to watching for the Lord, rededicate your heart and your mind to trusting in God in your life, maybe you've fallen away or gotten off in some kind of way, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, you see where I am in you. You see what I have chosen, the lifestyle that I have chosen. Lord God, forgive me for that. Bring me back to you. Bring me close to your side, Lord God. Cleanse me, Lord Jesus. Purify me, God. Help me to turn away from sin and walk towards you, Jesus, and not towards this world. Help me to go into your place of safety. Help me to come back into the gate, Lord God. Help me to come back into the ark. I put my trust in you and my hope in you, Lord. Forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed those prayer, that prayer, and you believe that prayer, then Holy Spirit has come into you and filled you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus um, when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. Um, One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out 
find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, um, as well as go out and um, tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Also, um, one of the things that he wants you to do is go out and be baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. So God is with you. God is protecting you. Put your hope and your trust in him. You are in the ark of safety when you put your trust in him. He has got you. Amen. Just put your hope and trust in him, even in the wait. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.